Well, good morning to everyone, and especially to our many uh, international visitors who are not only adjusting to uh, the great Texas barbecue available here, but also to time zones and waking up what may seem like the middle of the night. So we're really grateful that you're here as well. My role is the chair of the Kuali Foundation Board, and I have a few things I want to share with you this morning as we head into this very important <clears throat> Kuali days as part of our second decade. So as the Kuali community, and especially those of us who are gathered here today, reflect on this past year, we have had an extraordinary year. We've taken some really important steps for our second decade that continue our journey and that is to uh, continue to drive Kuali's founding mission. And if you haven't thought lately about our founding mission and when we got started and what we've been doing over the last 10 years, our mission remains solely to help colleges and universities succeed with their mission. So since I got in on uh, Monday evening, up and down the hallways, receptions, various uh, meetings, and uh, even at Educause, which was just two weeks ago, some of you were there, there is a real excitement when people are putting their hands on the products that are coming out of this community right now and seeing the work. And I also want to say, I, I just know how much hard work the entirety of this community has put into this last year. We've really thought long and hard about what it would take to succeed as the world was changing around us in our second decade. We've been critical, we've thought, we've tested assumptions, we've challenged each other to make sure that the choices that we were making and the direction that we were heading is really what we needed to do to continue the journey to achieve our mission. This transition over this last year uh, it was, has been one of learning. And I want to say, I know not every idea that came from me or that came from you or that came from any particular person uh, has been without thought, debate, tuning, refinement. And I think it's very important to just affirm that's what makes this community work. We are able to talk with each other, to debate with each other, to test, to improve, backtrack if we've made a mistake, and go forward again. And that's why we're still here going in our second decade in a world that's changing around us. I know many roles have changed, uh, and I can say as a chief information officer at Indiana University, uh, we felt a lot of those roles change ourselves roles in technical work, roles in the, the functional design and functional work, roles on boards. And these are all aimed to help us go faster, to streamline our ability to make quick and rapid trade-offs and provide multiple paths for institutions to succeed with their goals. So if there's any single central message that I want you to leave Kuali Days with this year, it simply is this, Kuali is for all. It is for the institutions with existing local on-premises implementations that went early, those who move very early. And I have to call out Vincent, who is here from uh, Nairobi. They were the first to go live on the not yet released Kuali financial system in 2005. It was flown over in a pizza box server, and I understand you've recently upgraded to uh, Kuali Financial System 5. Is that right? Vincent, can you stand up so everybody can? <laughs> Great. So, so when I say some went early on an international basis, we really, really mean it. And uh, it's been working there for them uh, uh, over these many years. But our other early adopters, Colorado State, Arizona, Indiana, MIT, University of California, Davis, Irvine, Michigan State, Maryland, many others, you know the roster. Many of us have large, complex implementations of various versions of quality software that have evolved over the years, and we need to keep those moving forward. We need to know our options in the future. We may continue doing that. At some point, we may go to off-premises. 
We need to continue to enhance our user experiences. We need a quicker pace of features, uh, punching out the roadmap, and we do much of this through the continued engagement of our member institutions and partners in work with Kuali, the company. Kuali is also for the new institutions, for those who are just now getting to a point of transition and needing to solve a problem to enable their mission. They may want to go to cloud right away to SaaS, they want products that fit higher ed, that are made for higher ed, and they want the unparalleled risk mitigation that the quality community offers. Uh, this is an opportunity with the configuration we're in now, I think, to grow and invite those members who really need a SaaS solution and they want to move quickly in ways that we've not been able to accommodate before. And it's for all the others in between uh, who value the ability to turn our ideas into great software, mitigate our risks, and drive forward with the things we need at our institutions. So if you'll allow, and those of you who know me well, know that from time to time I have to regress into business school professor format. Um, I'm a bit of a closet economist you know I'm the CIO at Indiana University, and some may not know. Uh, most recently, I've picked up the, t the title of Interim Dean for the School of Informatics and Computing. So uh, that's an adventure in and of itself. And I want to emphasize the word interim, not a candidate, uh, but opportunity to help on that side of the house. Um, I, I feel just a little bit compelled to want to walk the community through a few very important tenants of how we intentionally are evolving our ecosystem. And that is uh, Kuali the foundation, Kuali the company, and Kuali the community in an interconnected and very intentional way. So now those of us in higher ed who are on the buy side of big systems, ERP systems, learning management systems, and a range of all the little thingies that we seem to need now for our uh, university, some of them from the cloud and otherwise. You know, over the years, we have really become frustrated with some of the unsavory business practices that plague the behavior of some of our corporate suppliers, partners, vendors, friends, whatever you want to call them and seems best. You know, when I go to gatherings of chief information officers uh, in higher ed, uh, or even ones that are uh, outside of higher ed, uh, across industry, it seems the same corporate names get wailed about over and over again in the problems that we encounter. But yet, I deeply believe, and this is a truly important point, if the coffee hasn't kicked in, kind of, you know, jolt the person next to you, um, that sometimes the shorthand of, well, .org is good and .com is bad is an oversimplification. It glosses over the root causes of the behaviors that drive us crazy sometimes uh, from the folks that we work with. And so that's why in this community, we did create the company to do all the good things that a commercial model is especially capable of doing. It can feel the imperative of, to urgently meet and satisfy the needs of its customers, hire top talent, drive difficult trade-offs in timely ways. The company can convey a clear, unified, practical, understandable marketing message that can be understood by new adopters, it can respond to those long RFPs that universities are so talented in writing, and it can lead a range of services needed to help each type of institution. The company's customers are members of the product boards, the financial uh, product, the research, ready, student, and others, who may be evolving and converging their local implementations. The company's customers are also those institutions who choose to buy hosted cloud-based software as a service and proceed in that direction now, or just know they want a path to it in the future. Likewise, we also form the company in ways that mitigate the pressures and the root causes of the dysfunctional behavior that sometimes drive us crazy as buyers in colleges and universities. So when we look deeply in the root causes of some of those bad behaviors, 
you know, we see that they're really, off. they're not bad people, they're, they're not. They're just being driven and motivated by the whip of short-term venture capital, sometimes where the firm is the product to be flipped and sold or merged for a quick profit uh, by someone, or the firm becomes overly beholden to hitting big quarterly returns for its shareholders or other investors who want maximum returns every quarter or every year. My pension funds are invested in Wall Street through lots of these firms, and I like for my pension funds to get great returns. This is not disparate on the system as a whole. It is descriptive of the kind of firm as part of the quality ecosystem we sought to create. So thus, the company was capitalized with patient capital. It cannot be bought, sold, or merged for 10 years without consent of the Kuali Foundation. Its software licenses cannot be changed without the consent of the Kuali Foundation. It is open source, and I'm sure Joel will em emphasize that in a moment. Two years ago, to be clear, the Kuali software code produced by our community was available for download as open source. Today, tomorrow, two years from now, 15 years from now, the Kuali code produced by this expanding community will be available as open source with an open source initiative, OSI, approved software license that embodies the very definition of what open source actually is. Yes, I agree. Now, that is, that is a very important economic point for our colleges and universities because it gives us a tool for risk mitigation and control uh, in the future. It's not the point about the wonders of open source and community and design and production. That's a discussion in and of itself. I am talking about the sheer economic risk mitigation at our institutions when we have a tool to negotiate should something not be in our interest uh, in the future. So I can tell you at Indiana University with the hundreds of software contracts that we have with many firms, some for on-premises work, some for cloud work and all, that I am quite certain if all of those products were available open source, we would have a much more satisfactory conversation as we negotiate terms from time to time. I know some of these points are a little bit in the weeds when really everybody here, the core thing is we want great software. We want confidence in its future evolution, and we want assurance of fair cost. And all of that is easier said than done as uh, the last few decades, for those of you uh, who've been around this for a while, if you back up or over a few decades, whether the, the effort was a large one or a small, whether it was commercially driven or was an open source product, even homegrown efforts, things written at our own institutions, have all proved that achieving those things is a difficult journey. But yet, we believe the design of this Kuali community is hugely important. It is distinct, and it is a contrast relative to any other offering out there. This foundation, this company, and the whole of this community are working together to serve colleges and universities. We are not here for banks or auto manufacturing companies or pipe fitting companies or consulting firms. We are here driving for our mission for higher education. And that is a distinguished and different value proposition than any other in the marketplace today. I, I also respect that others may try to recreate this in some different way, anchored in other historic economic models of the past, but we've learned so much over the last decade. And this is how we're continuing to drive forward the very mission that first started Kowali yet some 10 years ago. So now back to the mission of our colleges and our universities. My president at Indiana University, Michael McRobbie, some of you heard from him a few years ago, 
He recently and rightly made the strong case that, quote, much fiction is written regarding the notion that universities are not changing. Now, while some elements of that statement may be fair debate in the bar later tonight, uh, the journey for many of our great research universities, our community colleges, and every category of instance, uh, institution in between has been for decades, for centuries, for millennia, adapting to a changing world around it. Universities are highly resilient and highly adaptive. But there is no time in recent decades, if ever, when the pace of change in the economics, the fundamental economics of higher education, our responsibilities to our stakeholders, the scrutiny of that responsibility, and changes in technology have combined at a faster rate. We see far greater pressures for managerial, not just financial, reporting as budget scrutiny grows. Compliance, particularly for research and federal contracts and grants, grows. Student services, advising, curriculum roadmaps, all driving to simplify the student experience, make it go faster. Those pressures are particularly intensifying at state-funded institutions. Cost pressures to contain administrative cost while redirecting resources to education and research is accelerating. And I can tell you, speaking for Indiana University, we have closed, merged, or created eight new academic schools in the past five years. That may be a land speed record because the needs for education are evolving and I know we are not alone in making these changes. So each of us here today, we play a role in this journey for higher education. Some teach classes and some register students and protect the integrity of the academic record. Some conduct research and some enable those grants to meet the very stringent regulatory frameworks of federal law or from some of our funding agencies. Some spend a lot of money, like me as a chief information officer, and some enable the financial management and compliance that ensures the integrity of our institution in the eyes of the public. So what we, the folks who are here, what we do control is many of the members of this room is the cost and the capability of the systems and the business processes at our institutions. Our world is evolving and the expectations in user experience, if Google released it yesterday or Amazon did it the day before, my goodness, why haven't your systems reflected that elegance? Uh, the pace of change, these are all accelerating expectations in the work that we do with our community. So I do think, I do think that we have also learned some very important lessons over the last 20 years of big systems, ERP systems, or whatever label you wish. Whether it's the systems from the big vendors, whether it's Kuali, or even the new cloud providers, we all see and we know that rabid local customizations over time are very, very expensive to maintain. They slow us down. They cost a lot. They come by many names, and each has some passionate, absolutely reasonable need to exist. But I do think this is one area where this community in particular can and we must look for ways to do better if we are to better align our software to the whole of the needs of the changing economics of higher education. The quality financial community who met yesterday the, uh, of early adopters, this is one of our communities that is leading the way to get back to a common base of software that enables the fundamental economic value proposition of coming and working together. So let me ask you, which would resonate more with you in your user community? If I uh, actually hold up materially a $100 bill here, would your user community rather have another $100 sitting in the budget for disposable income, or would they rather have better code faster? I suspect for many of us, we'd say, we'll take the better code faster, and we want to 
we need a process that turns our ideas and our dollars into code that our users value. So that is what we are working to achieve as a community, as a company, and as a foundation, and as our individual members. It's hard work to make great software that fits higher education, but this is our work. This is essential, and this is highly beneficial to the missions of our institutions. So I, as I reflect on where we're at in this Kowali days, I am doubly encouraged that we have done this before. We embarked upon bold goals that some thought improbable or our, our path seemed curious. Now this month, it was 10 years ago, one decade ago, that the first Kowali Days gathered in 2005 with an audience a mere fraction of the size gathered here today. And over time, we proved that as a community, we could build great enterprise-scale software that met our needs, could be installed, have clean audits for those with the, the Kowali financial system, and sustain it through a community. But it was just one year ago, again, that we embarked on a model and an evolved Kowali ecosystem that could go faster, could make it easier to produce beautiful software in a next generation architecture, support both on-premises or cloud options, and retain those essential economic risk mitigations that have always been central to who we are as Kowali. So I do want to affirm that the progress of this community in just 12 months has been nothing short of breathtaking and remarkable. Even if I, even if we, have made some mistakes along the way in the depth of our communication, in the clarity of how we worked through this, we are at that point and moving forward with a Kowali ecosystem. Kowali is for all. So in 2004, I spoke at a higher ed open source gathering, not Kowali, uh, at a conference regarding what are the must haves? What are the essentials for a vibrant open source uh, software uh, uh, project? And I think they are the three C's. They're the code, coordination, and community. If you don't have great code, nobody wants to use it. If you don't have efficient coordination, then you struggle to turn your ideas, your passion into dollars that make better code for the products that people need. And you need a passionate community of ideas, of users, of adopters who really understand this stuff. That higher ed does have some complexities that are innate and important to who we are and what we do. I see all three C's present in this Kowali community and in the products that are emerging. You will see them here at this Kowali Days in the Experience Center at the many tutorials uh, around the conference sessions the next two, uh, two days. I hope you will take it all in as much as possible because I am immensely proud of what we have achieved in yet just the 12 months since we last convened.